here's the trick. It, it, you have to create a void and fill it. So you have to turn something down. And in most people, I start almost every seminar by talking about memories, how memories affect us. Some people have big, bad memories and they think about them two minutes here, three minutes there, five minutes here, you know, a little bit at night and sometimes during the day. And if you actually take the minutes and add them up, with some people it's 30 minutes, with some it's an hour. I've had people tell me four and five hours a day, they spend thinking about the same thing. Now, when you start calculating the amount of time that eats up, even an activity like worrying, if somebody worries two minutes here and three minutes there and four minutes here, even worrying about different things, if it adds up to an hour or two hours a day, the minute you start going, well, even at an hour, it's 365 hours a year, 3,650 in 10 years, right? And then when you multiply that by four decades, you start talking north of 10, 12,000 hours. And when you literally ask people, does that sound smart? Something hits them in the neurology that goes, no, it's not. And what they need to do is to take these big giant pictures in their head and shrink them down so that you know they put a border around them, take control of their thoughts. Thinking should be done on purpose. You shouldn't be a victim of your own thoughts but we really don't teach people growing up to control anything about their mind. Uh, you know, when you take piano, they teach you to control your fingers, but they don't teach you to worry, not to worry about what people think about your playing because nothing will cripple a musician more than worrying about whether or not they're gonna make mistakes and whether or not people are gonna like it or not and all this nonsense. I mean, I had a guy who, who did a rock album and sold millions and millions of copies and when he sat down to make his next album, he couldn't write a song because all he could think about was if it wasn't as good as the last one, nobody was going to like it. He had pictures of audiences hating him before he would start to pluck a single note. And that's not how he wrote the first album. He had to go back to the state of consciousness he was in. Our state of consciousness controls how well we can learn things. We got to turn the nonsense down and then open up good ideas. We need to see ourselves in the future succeeding and almost reverse engineer our way back so that we know what path to take to become a better person, to become smarter, happier, more joyful, more functional. Uh, that's what I've always done. Um, remember at one time there were no houses. They're all made from somebody's imagination. There were no cars. First people imagine them, then they build them. Your life is no different. The, having an imagination, going into the future and seeing yourself in a new light, being happy doesn't mean you're there, but at least tells you where to go. Now, if you can take some steps backwards, you have some achievable goals.